Welcome to my channel Sewer Media where I talk all about sewing things for me and my children or this week I'm kind of talking about not sewing things <laughs> because it's been one of those weeks. So if you have followed me for a little while you will have seen a few videos in which I talked about my plans for sewing this November, sewing up a dress for my daughter, I have quite a few handmade gifts I'd like to make for Christmas and in fact I think it's been said before by a few other vloggers when you have a deadline or things that you've said you want to sew, no matter how much you want to sew them for other people, sometimes it's kind of hard to get the motivation to finish these projects when it's not for yourself. And this week I've really struggled to get my sojo and the motivation to just get through these projects, especially because a few of them I'm sewing in multiple numbers and let's be real, batch sewing just isn't for everyone. So before I launch into what's been happening in my sewing room, I thought I would briefly mention what I'm wearing today. This is one of my favourite pinafores. It is the Nina Lee Camden pinafore, and this is made in a beautiful corduroy fabric from Felicity Fabrics. The weather here is cooling down. It was really, really cold on the bike ride this morning, and so I have gone for a beautiful merino wool turtleneck. It's a ready-to-wear one, but there's still lots of wear in it, so I'm not going to replace it with a me made yet. And then I've got some tights and boots and then the pinafore over the top. So I am nice and snuggly warm. The Nina Lee Camden pinafore is such a beautiful pattern. I've made it as a skirt, I've made it as a pinafore, and I love all of the versions that I have made and they get a lot of wear in the winter. When I make Nina Lee patterns, I often have to grade across sizes. So I made my normal Nina Lee adjustments on this pattern. I made a 10 across the bust, a 12 at the waist, and I graded out to a 14 over the hips and it's perfect. It's very comfortable, it's not too tight fitting in the wrong places, and I really love the look of the princess seams across the bodice. So, what's been happening this week? Well, I started the Nutcracker dress in this gorgeous border print fabric, and I'm making a beautiful vintage pattern for my daughter, but unfortunately the instructions are not very detailed, and they leave out some rather pertinent details in terms of just where to line up the pieces. I mean there are lots of notches on this pattern, there are lots of fantastic details, but there are other details that just get a little bit left out. So I've got as far as sewing the skirt pieces together and then I started pinning on the bodice pieces to the skirt and that's where I got stuck about a week ago and I just haven't had the motivation to knuckle down and sort it out. I mean life is busy right for all of us I have three children, there are meals to be cooked, there is the house to tidy, and sometimes at the end of the day, which is when I do most of my sewing, I just don't have the brain space to try and work out what the pattern instructions are trying to ask me to do. So I've promised myself that this week, at some point, when I get an hour or so to sew, perhaps on one of her nursery days, I'm going to just sit down with these instructions and baste the pieces together by hand before I sew them on the machine, just to make sure that I've got the pattern correct. I just don't want to get the bodice placement wrong and spend my precious hour of sewing time unpicking, although that does often happen. Now thank you so much to a lot of you who did comment and tell me which colour you thought I should do for the sash. I have chosen. The sash is actually attached, but I'm not going to show you which colour I picked until I reveal the final dress. So do come back and watch my November makes video in which I'll hopefully have had this one finished and I'll be able to show you the finished dress. This one is on my work in progress pile and because I just got confused and a bit baffled I put it down and it's just been sitting waiting to be picked up again. In the meantime I decided to start working on one of my A Gift to November projects for my daughter's teachers. So I decided to sew up some tea towels from this beautiful rifle paper linen cotton. It's so beautiful to work with and I think it will just make beautiful tea towels. I'm actually going to put some hand cream or perhaps a bottle of wine inside these and use these to wrap the gift so it will sort of be a two-in-one gift if you like and nice and sustainable without any wrapping paper and things. What I decided to do with this one to save time. People don't save time. Don't rush. It only ends in tears. So I decided to make the corners just by folding over the fabric because it's quite a fine linen cotton I thought that would be okay. 
it wasn't. I have broken a sewing needle and I just at the end of the day I don't like the way that it looks. I don't think it looks professional and I'm also concerned with use that this corner might sort of come undone which is more important. I want these to be able to be used and used and not end up being unused because the corner comes apart. So I sewed up six of these tea towels with a little bit of ribbon on the corner so that you can hang it up nicely in the kitchen and I wasn't pleased. So with the next six that I set out to make from this colorway of the cotton linen, I decided to just bite the bullet and mitre each of these corners. It does take a little longer. I'll be honest, I didn't think sewing tea towels would take this long. I thought it would be a lovely quick project to just get made up quickly and give to my daughter's teachers. It takes quite a while to mitre corners, but I'm really pleased because I've learned a new skill and having mitered 537 tea towel corners, I now know how to do it, so I won't have to look up the tutorial next time. I'll link the tutorial below in case you're interested, it was really brilliant and very clear and if you want to mitre some tea towel corners or napkin corners or I don't know, any corners, it might be useful to you too. So I guess my question is, I've sewn six tea towels like this and I'm just not sure what to do with the navy blue ones, should I unpick the whole thing all around each edge so that I get a really nice clean stitching line or shall I just unpick the corner and re-sew that with a mitered corner? I can't quite decide. So in the meantime these have also gone on the works in progress or things I'm currently ignoring until I get the motivation to sew them again or come up with a satisfactory solution to my mitered corner picking unpicking problem. So that's the tea towels. I do think they're very pretty though, which has kind of given me the motivation to get the unpicker out and get cracking, but I just cannot face unpicking six tea towels and starting again from scratch. So answers on a postcard or in the comments box below. The nutcracker dress was set to one side, the tea towels have been set to one side. I've decided to start something new and that is the hot water bottle cover for my daughter. Now I shared these in my gift to November video. This is a pattern by Twig and Tail. It's a, such a beautiful pattern. There are lots of different options in terms of animals and sea creatures that you can make from this pattern and I have already made a couple for my children. I made the owl and I made the bear and now for my daughter I'm making the cat. This is a particularly satisfying pattern because you can use all sorts of scraps that are left over in your sewing room. I'll show you what I've been using for my daughters. So excuse the pins but this is as far as I've got with this wee kitty cat. So the body of the hot water bottle is made from a boiled wool and I used this for her coat when I made her a coat a couple of years ago and I had enough scraps to cut out the front and the back pieces for the hot water bottle so that's great. Number one because it's a lovely fabric and I really want to get it used up. And number two because it's wool it keeps the hot water bottle nice and insulated and warm all night for them but it also feels nice and safe in terms of keeping them protected against burns from a hot water bottle. Now the face and the tummy and the tail on the back piece I have cut from a fleece fabric that I used to line one of the dressing gowns I made for my boys. I had enough left over to cut these pieces out which is great and then I made a little dress from this floral fabric which I have used for the nose and I'm going to use to line the ears and the paws for the kitty cat. Now I've made a start on some of the hand embroidery. I have just put a blanket stitch around this nose. Now for these pieces here I've actually used bonder web to attach them to the fleece and then I'm going to stitch them down, hand embroider these down just because they're so small but I will use the machine to attach this bigger piece here of fleece and this tummy piece here. So I'll use the machine for those but I also like the way that the hand embroidery looks on the face of the kitty cat so that's what I'll be doing for this project and I'm just having so much fun with that and for me that's what sewing is all about. Yes it's about making lovely things for other people but it's also what brings me joy and right now this project is bringing me joy. Right now in my sewing room I have a load of unfinished projects, I have one thing that I'm picking away at slowly doing the hand embroidery when I have a free moment, but I just, I'm losing my sojo a bit. I can't seem to just make myself sit down and work on those tea towels or work out what the instructions are trying to tell me about my daughter's dress. So tell me, dear people of YouTube, what should I do next?
I do miss sewing for myself, so this month it's been all about sewing for other people and as much as I love that, I'm actually really missing sewing things for myself, uh, and in particular pretty things. Now my list of sewing for other people is super long still, I really want to make some Christmas pyjamas for my children, we celebrate St Nicholas Day which is on the 6th of December, so that's quite soon, so I do need to get working on those, those will be one of my next projects. And then I also have a few other gifts that I need to get sewn up, so I really shouldn't be prioritising sewing for myself, but I think when one loses one's sojo, you just have to indulge in a little bit of selfish sewing. So I have a couple of projects that I'm quite excited about and I thought I'd share them. Let me know in the box below what you think I should make next for myself. The gifts will get made, but here are the options. So the first option is necessary, but a little dull. So my pyjama trousers that I currently wear and have worn for years have got a hole in a rather unfortunate place, so they do need replacing. So like I say, necessary, but not the most interesting. However, I have got this beautiful brushed cotton fabric that I bought from Minerva, and it's this beautiful tartan fabric in my, some of my favourite colours, reds, a little bit of green, and navy blue. So I think this would make a really lovely pair of winter slash Christmassy pyjamas. So that's one idea. Now I've made the Tilly and the Buttons Jamie pyjama bottoms before. Very quick, very easy, very wearable. However, they are quite a high rise. And whilst most of my clothing is high rise, for pyjama trousers, I really prefer a low waist. No idea why, but there you go. So I've just found I don't reach my Jamie pyjama bottoms as much as my other pyjamas because they're just quite high waisted. So if anyone's got any recommendations for a low-waisted pyjama pants pattern, please do let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, what I think I'm going to have to do is go to my Jamie pattern, take my pyjama trousers that I currently have, and then just amend the pattern to bring that waist down to a low waist. And also, surprisingly, because I'm only just under 5 foot 5, and I think that's the height that Tilly drafts for, but I found the Jamie pyjamas came up short. I do like long pyjama bottoms, there's just something about shuffling around the house in your slippers and pyjama bottoms that totally cover your feet, which I really like. So I did find they come up a bit short on me actually, so I will need to extend the length of those as well as to alter the rise. And when one has lost one sojo, I'm not sure I'm really in the mood for messing about with patterns, however I do need a new pair of pyjamas, so I may just need to bite the bullet and get on with that one. So that's option one. Now option two is another practical piece but I'm so excited by the fabric and it is the Irma Body Warmer by Fiber Mood. Now as the weather gets colder I would just love another layer to be able to put under my coats, especially when I'm cycling that's just going to be another added layer of warmth. And then often when you go inside at first you just still feel quite cold don't you? So to be able to take off my coat but still have a nice snuggly layer on that I can then remove later on once I've warmed up would be perfect. And here is the fabric that I bought. It is this beautiful snuggly fabric from So Me Sunshine. I bought it a couple of weeks ago now and I've just been looking at it and stroking it. And I can't wait to sew it up into the Irma Body Warmer. Now this side is beautifully soft but the inside is not what you would want to wear next to your skin I don't think. I have just got some black lining fabric that I bought very cheaply from Minerva. I've used it quite a lot before. I just keep a bunch of black and white lining in my stash so that I can grab it when I need it. So I think what I'll do is I'll line the body warmer with this which will make it easy to get on and off and it will also just mean that it feels quite nice next to my skin. So because I'm using this lovely fluffy fabric I needed to think quite carefully about what I was going to use to bind the edges and I've decided to use this <laughs> Just one minute. Talk quietly amongst yourselves. And I've decided to use this leather look binding from Minerva again to bind the edges and I think that will just look really really nice. Now again I've not sewn with this before so I'm a bit nervous about what needles to use so this will take a little bit of research and thought before I sew this one up. So again not sure if that's the plan to go for at the moment that might be a January make we'll just see but it's one that I'm feeling really inspired by just because of the snuggly fabric. Oof, I love it. So 
the last option, option number three, is the new craft house everyday dress. Now, I have been seeing these on Instagram, I've been following the hashtag because I just think this looks like such a beautiful and more importantly easy to wear dress. It is a very simple bodice, it has lovely puffed sleeves and then a tiered gathered skirt. So it looks quite simple and it sounds quite simple but the versions that I've been seeing just look gorgeous and I love the finishing on the sleeves and I just think this would suit my style beautifully. I don't want to buy any more new fabric right now, I have enough in my stash to be getting on with and I did buy this a little while ago because it was just too beautiful to not buy. I don't normally do that but this one is special. Oh look at that, look at the colours! It's not wintry, you can tell me that below. I know it's not wintry but I just don't mind, I just feel like sewing up something for the sake of it and for bringing me joy and this fabric brings me a lot of joy. Look at those colours! So this is a Lady McElroy cotton fabric and it's just beautiful. It is nice and light but it does have a good weight and I think it would hold the puff of those sleeves perfectly without being too heavy. So I think this would be a fun dress to sew up. And the pattern looks really straightforward. I've sewn lots of gathered and tiered skirts before so I know I could do it quite quickly and without a lot of thought which at the moment I think is kind of important. Since I've lost my sojo it would be nice to just have a quick satisfying sew and at the end of it to come out with a beautiful dress that I can maybe even wear for Christmas. Let me know in the comments below which one of those three options you think I should make next. The pyjamas or the Irma body warmer or the new craft house everyday dress. I'd be so interested to see what you think I should make next. And yes, if you think I should just be getting on with all of those gifts and not and not getting distracted by beautiful new patterns for myself, then don't tell me that, because I know that. But yes, one does just sometimes need to sew for oneself, because this is a hobby after all, and it's meant to bring us joy. And I will get those gifts sewn up. I just might need to take a break for a little bit, and then come back to them. There's time yet. I'm hoping to have some of them finished in order to enter the A Gift to November challenge, which is running over on Instagram at the moment. But if I don't, that's okay. As long as they're finished in time to gift the recipients in December, that's perfect. So thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed seeing where I'm getting up to on all of these projects. And I'm looking forward to hopefully sharing some finished makes with you at the end of November, which isn't very far away now. I'm looking forward to a lovely weekend this weekend with our family. We are going to decorate for Christmas. I know it's only November, but we're going to do it nonetheless because it brings me joy. <laughs> You sensing a theme in this video? I love the sparkly twinkly lights especially as the weather is getting colder and the evenings are getting darker and it just starts feeling a little bit cold and miserable. So to come home to seeing our tree with the fairy lights all lit up just feels so cozy and happy. So I think we'll get the tree up this weekend, not all of the decorations but certainly the tree and some of our lights just to bring that wintry cozy feeling into the house. Do let me know in the comments below what you're sewing at the moment or if you've lost your sojo and you just want to commiserate with me then do share that as well in the comments. I always love hearing from you. If you haven't subscribed and hit that notification bell then do that. It would be lovely to have you as a regular subscriber on my channel. Thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed and who do comment regularly. It's been so much fun having chats with you in the comments. So thank you very much for all of the lovely comments that you do leave. So I'm going to head off now, cook the dinner, do some of the housework that needs to be done while I ponder watch to sew next and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Goodbye!